Anyway, I spent most of the day at a four-year-old's birthday party today, so that was super fun. Did they even know you were there? I don't know. Do you know who people are when you're four? Do you remember being four? No, I don't. Nah, me either. Anyway, what that's, it's like that's the that's the funny thing about memory is that by the time you reach our age, uh, Aaron is um, well, Aaron's Benjamin Button, so he's forty something years old, but he looks like he's twelve. Uh, barely is something. Let's go with barely a forty something. <laughs> and I'm officially middle aged at thirty seven. So, like when we remember things from when we were kids, we're not actually remembering the event. We are remembering what we've remembered in the past. Wait, say that again. That's real. So when you remember something that happened as a kid right now in in, in today, you are not recalling the actual event. You are recollecting the last time you thought about when that happened. Yeah, but isn't that that's that's everything, though? You're you're always thinking about the last time until it's the last time. Yeah. I don't even know what the heck you just I this is a great way to start it, right? Yeah, I think you're agree. I think we're agreeing. I'm pretty sure we're agreeing. Anyway, we're on the same page. Birthdays. We don't remember them, but yet we have them every year. But at some point you like what age did your I don't want to get too crazy here, but what age do you think birthday parties should stop for children? Like we're going to bring everyone to Chuck E. Cheese or we're going to have everybody over for Ice cream and cake, like your friends. I don't know. Shit, shit's right. too expensive nowadays, so I'm not. I'm not for that at all. Like seven? Can you have a birthday party when you're seven? I mean, yeah. If if your kid has enough for that's the other thing. Like, you, you got to know if your kid has any friends or not. So, like, why are you forcing a bunch of people together that don't really know each other? Just for what? So the one kid who wants to punch my son in the face can punch him in the face on his birthday. Right. Probably I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. I only had really one friend. So like birthday parties sucked. I hated birthday parties back in the day. I mean, you went to them. I went to them because I was invited, but not because I was actually friends. It was just the, that was the thing that you did. Everybody went to Discovery Zone and, you know, you ran around tunnels for four hours. In that MRSA pit of a ball. Yeah. Slide. Ugh. Listen, we we're all stronger for it. Okay, so then you have like these birthday parties when you're a kid. Then there's like a gap, right? Where like you hate everyone. You don't even want a birthday party or it just becomes too expensive to take like everybody to the movies because that's what, you know, that's what you're into in that kind of middle of your childhood, younger days. So you don't really have any birthday parties. But then you go to like college and birthday parties come back. Yo, no, birthday com- parties come back. Well, I mean, because really it's not about the birthday parties. It's any excuse to get blackout drunk. Hey, it's it's midterms. Everybody gets blackout drunk. It's a Tuesday. Everybody gets blackout drunk. Our, our team just won the championship. Everybody gets blackout drunk. So, I mean, it's just people looking for excuses. And birthdays are just one of those things that if you're in a large group of people, there's such a smattering of birthdays that, you know, it's just it's just another excuse to drink your face off. It wouldn't be a show without mentioning Nick Rush. Nick Rush one time said to me, there are a lot of birthdays in September and October. And I laughed him off stage. I'm like, this is the stupidest thing you ever said. Turns out there really are more birthdays in September and October. Bro, just do the math. What's nine months before it? No, I get it. I mean, yeah, I get it. Poor, poor people... I- Poor people get pussy or and dick for Christmas, like that's or New Year's, and then just like nine months later, it's like, oops. I mean, even you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, preemies are technically that too. I mean, you have uh, you know, Valentine's Day mistakes too. I bring it up because Max birthday September eleventh or September fifteenth. That's September eleventh. September fifteenth. We said what we said. Yeah, uh, and he's getting punished for missing this episode. Obviously, my anyway. my my brother was born in September, so you know, it's, it's fair. Gross. I have a brother in September too. This is yeah. Oh uh, yeah, no, it's that's a real thing. Anyway, um, <laughs> the most important birthday ever is debated. Well, not ever, but the most important birthday in your life, Jerome, is debated. 
and I don't even know if you know this. When is Batman's birthday? Oh, uh, Batman's birthday is in May. It is. Is that what you think? Uh, th- that's that's been that's been like the the thought the the prevailing thought for a long time. And then there was some other thought when the new then they redid everything in the new fifty two and they came out with another birthday and I thought I thought you were going with Jesus. Well, wow. <laughs> the most important okay. birthday in my life is Jesus. I mean, it's the most important birthday as far as the U.S. Econ- and world economy is concerned. That's for certain. That's well, for certain. Well, no. If I'm talking to you and it's just a me and you show, we're definitely bringing Batman into this. Uh, I mean, obviously. Okay, so people are listening to this on April the 3rd. And when I went into Batman's birthday, it came up April the 7th. And I said, that can't be. Right? And so did a quick Google search, of course. And found that his birthday is widely debated. So DC Comics, okay, they released when Batman's birthday was. They say it's March 30th because in March on March 30th, 1939, Batman was first introduced to Detective Comics number 27. How do you feel about that? Uh, I feel like that is a fantastic way of uh bringing the history of the comics and retconning all the other bullshit for and tying it with a nice little bow on it so not obvious obviously not his birthday we don't want like a 80 quick math 83 somebody check me 83 year old batman that'd be really stupid right? i mean i mean yeah but the other thing about it is is that the way time works in comic books is different you can have the course of events of a storyline that the story arc as people call in comic books can last 12 issues a whole year's worth and it really only spans a week or two in the timeline of the comics i'm glad you brought up the timelines because i i'm not a comic book guy but did some research here on batman and time time in general is uh very kind of wishy-washy in most comic book story arcs, apparently. And so um, there's kind of this like sliding timeline, definitely with Batman, right? There's definitely a sliding timeline. So um, when DC kind of first introduced Bruce Wayne, there was one mention of April 7th as his birthday. But then later on in the Detective Comics series number 494, it was stated his birthday was now February 19th. What do you think of that? It's very interesting. It is very interesting. Then in DC's New 52, what is that? What's New 52? So really putting it plainly, they they felt that they couldn't create any more storylines without having to retcon storylines of the past. So they're like, okay, we're just going to pretend that there's a giant cataclysm and and just hit the reset button on our universe. And now we're telling brand new stories where things are the same, but maybe just just a little bit different, right? Just not exactly the same as it used to be. You know, now uh, Tim Drake, who is the third Robin, he's gay now, which is fine. I don't care. Yeah. But he wasn't gay in the original, like, you know, the storyline that I, I grew up with. He actually got uh, Stephanie Brown, who was uh, technically the fourth Robin and uh, spoiler. He got her pregnant. They had a wait, relationship. And wait, 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 Robin. Fucked his replacement and she had a baby. So. She um, had an abortion. Jeez, uh, oh, and, <laughs> and when, they don't call when, him the Dark Knight for nothing. When, yeah, and when Tim Drake decided he didn't want to be Robin anymore, uh, Stephanie Brown basically took his place, uh, kind of hijacking the job, despite Batman's uh, pleas. To it, she didn't last very long. He he bullied. He basically bullied the shit out of her. Um, but that's a storyline from fifteen years ago. Okay, well, um, this this birthday storyline, it doesn't even go away yet because um, the official debut of Batman is just one of the, uh, you know, features in Detective Comics. He didn't actually get his own solo series 
in the detective comics until April 25th, 1940. So you could celebrate Batman's birthday on April 25th sure. or, or like you said, May was the actual cover date on detective comics number 27 when they used to put the date like a couple months ahead of time or a month ahead of time. And so that's, I think your side of this argument that his birthday is sometime in May. I just um, remember, you know, getting emails and stuff like that. Oh, it's Batman's birthday. It's Batman month. You know, they're just trying to sell comics and make some money, you know, which, you know, comic book shops don't make a whole lot of money. So, you know, good for them for trying to make something happen. Um, Some people argue that the true birth of Batman was the night his parents were murdered. Right. Well, that's um, that's also that is also a prevailing argument. Bruce Wayne was born on, you know, X and Batman was really born on Y. And from that day on, Bruce Wayne was basically dead and. Batman was the prevailing personality that he used for basically the rest of his life. And Bruce Wayne is just, you know, a cover, basically. I promise this is a golf show, but June 26th at 1047 p.m. That's when his parents are murdered. Uh, but DC, for whatever reason, um, they celebrate Batman Day every year on july 23rd that is um i guess the preview night every year for the san diego comic con or somewhere around there and everyone walks around san diego dressed as batman oh my goodness this freaking birthday thing is insane anyway in the animated series which i don't know animated series versus comic book bruce actually says his birthday's in october so maybe this is a lot like Jesus. Well, I mean, here's the other thing, right? And uh, it's very common for comic books and more fans of like uh, from Marvel. You have different universes, right? So the Batman uh, voiced by Kevin Conroy, who is absolutely iconic and rest in peace, Kevin. Thank you for everything you gave us. Um, that's a that's technically a different could be a different a Batman from a different universe. It's not, you know, the the, you know, comics universe or, you know, um, much like Marvel has their many universes and people are being more familiar with the idea that there are different characters from different universes that may have the same name and a relative background, but they are actually different in many different ways. And that's OK, because it's all under the umbrella, so to say. I think we just came up with our first spin-off pod. We're going to do comic book talk with Jerome. There's no doubt about it. This is definitely going to be our first spin-off pod. And if you have an opinion on Batman's birthday, hit us up in the comment section. We want to hear from you. When is Batman's birthday? And if you're just listening, why are you just listening? Head over to YouTube and check us out. I got my green hat on. It is officially Masters Week now that it's Monday morning. Well, Sunday after the actual golf, the Live Golf Tour. Um, the Live Golf League, excuse me. I have to get that ingrained in my head. It is not a tour. It's a league. Um, winner of Live Golf Orlando, his birthday, May 3rd, a month from the time that you're listening to this. So happy early birthday to Brooks Kepka, who showed out in Orlando. Thankfully, we've been begging for this all, I don't know, the last three, four months since we've been doing the show. We wanted to see Brooks put it all together. He finally put it all together. It was awesome. It was awesome. So fuck the PGA Tour in a big way because it's this week is going to be all about Brooks Kepka. No doubt about it. I already got my bed in. I mean, ever since we saw Full Swing, right? And you have Brooks on there just, just meandering, melancholy, full of ennui about his career and where things were going and not really showing out, you know, last year and for live and now showing everybody. Oh, yeah. No, this is this, he's the fucking man. He knows what he's fucking doing. Yeah, he he commands the golf course when he wants to. You know, he can hit the drive 360. He can lay back when it's time to lay back. He hit some incredible approaches today in the third round, just tucking it right by the pin. Missed like maybe one putt inside. Um, we don't have the official stats rolled up yet. I think he missed like one putt inside 10 feet for the entire weekend. 
which is so key heading in to Augusta where, I mean, so key to golf in general, right? Like if you putt well, yeah, if you putt well, you're going to score well. Um, But it's especially true in the Masters where everyone can go and attack that little course in Augusta where they're just bombing balls out. Everything is a good lie in the fairways, despite, you know, the undulation and all that. Everybody's out there just attacking pins on so many holes. They've moved the tee boxes back. That doesn't work. They moved them up. That doesn't work. You know, they've relocated some bunkers. That doesn't work. The, you know, everyone goes low at Augusta and the winner's going to definitely go low. I think Brooks has got it to go low. I think the important thing to remember about a course like Augusta is the fact that it has been around for so long that yes, you want to move the tee boxes around, but at its crux and you can move bunkers around, but at its crux, the course is the course and, and everybody's played this course so much that the, this, this field of, of players that are heading into the masters are so experienced with it that it will be the smallest things, like you said, uh, the punting game that's really going to make the difference on who's going to who's going to leave. Yeah, um, I'd love to go to Augusta. I only live a few hours from there and always enter the lotto, never win. So if anybody's got you know extra ticket or something, hit me up. Um, I would love to go out there and and watch some golf. Um, I don't know if you know this about Augusta. Of course, let's talk. Let's let's start here. They haven't. They didn't let black people in to like fucking 20 years ago shame on them that's that's disgraceful and they i think they still only have one female member like condoleezza rice might be the only one i don't even know if there are more oh and and they only let her in because that was a twofer it was a twofer yeah she's a black and a female oh yeah nailed it yeah exactly exactly um so and if she was and if she was jewish on top of it that would have been the trifecta well, if she was Jewish, she would have been in from the jump. I thought, I, mean, I thought, the, I thought the old joke about country clubs—they didn't like Jews. Well, you got money. If you got money, you you know you can pay for the bunkers to move. I don't know. Maybe there's, you don't like the Jewish. Plenty money. Of, there's plenty of rich black people. I, I don't. I don't. I think that's a facile <laughs> argument. Uh, I mean, that's are, you're right. I mean, you're the right. The black community right. has had money for like, like I, I don't know where this idea that that there haven't been wealthy black people like there've been wealthy black people is long since the 1800s. That's not, it's always been a thing, but it's just the whole socioeconomic thing of keeping, keeping people like them out, which obviously, again, going back to our whole point of the P the uh, Papa Gulf alpha is that they are steeped in racism. I mean, you want to talk about history and they got a whole long history of being racist. Right. So, you know, yeah. I mean, well, the one good thing is that we don't have Papa Golf Alpha this coming weekend because they don't have anything to do with the Masters except that their players go there. Um, I don't know if you know this, but the majors are not run by the prevailing top tour, or whatever you want to call them. Um, this is uh, uh, the Masters Invitational. This is the players that they want there. And, you know, there are ways to qualify, which, of course, official world golf rankings needs to leave because there are players who made it in the top 50 over some of these, <clears throat> excuse me, over some of these live guys <clears throat> that just don't belong. They don't, they don't belong at Augusta. And um, we got to get rid of this, that stupid, the stupid fucking rankings, man. Drive me nuts. We'll have an entire show on the rankings, but anyway, before we, before we get to the masters, um, let's talk about round three where Sebastian Munoz did not go away. I mean, he hung in there with Brooks while Brooks was looking like he had the chance to kind of run away with this thing and hide. I mean, there were some really good rounds. There's some really good round threes from a bunch of guys. Of course, the four aces always put together a good round three. I mean, that's the best team in the league. I don't think there's much debate about that. They're going to win the league again, right? Yeah, they look so dangerous. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Brooks and smash, uh, spent the entire three rounds in the top contention, mm-hmm. um, pulling out obviously a second place finish, uh, second only to Torque, um, you know, headed by uh um, Sebastian Munoz. Well, headed by Sebastian Munoz. Jocko Neiman, yeah. But Jocko Neiman being the the captain who was you know, not didn't didn't have, you know, the best rounds. Yeah, yeah, he was meh. He was meh this weekend. Um, yeah, you all well, you mentioned it. Torque gets their first ever win. Kind of 
man, I was kind of, I, I know you can't, you missed the end here, but I was kind of rude. There was like a chance there where we could have had a playoff for the individual and a playoff for the team. And I was like, magical. Oh my God. I was rooting for that so hard. We almost had like a three way team playoff because the four aces came on so hard to get up. I think they were, I think I want to say Torque, what they finished 36 under. Is that right? Yes. 36 under. Yeah. And uh, I, I want to say like Torque and smash were at 35 and the four aces got to 34 with like three holes to play. Peter Uline drained like a, 68 foot birdie putt that was going in at like 100 miles an hour hit the back of the cup and fell fell back into the hole um to get them within one uh it just physics you know, is a crazy thing <laughs> you got it if hey if you don't get it to the hole it can't go in N- none of the putts that left that are left short go in some of the ones that are hit too too hard they do go in yeah. just a, you know we don't give out a lot of golf tips but that's that's one that you can you can hold me to um yeah but torque got their uh their first ever team win and it was like a weird scene on the 18th hole because Sebastian Munoz was chasing Brooks by a shot and they both kind of hit their approach in like a similar area of the green. And Brooks just needed a two putt. And so he actually left his putt shorter than Munoz. So he had to go on that second putt before Munoz did. And he made it and he won the individual. But then you had to watch Munoz make the putt because if he had missed the putt, then Smash and Torque would have had a play in a playoff, which they explained a little deeper how the playoff works. The captain picks two players. They go back to hole nine and they play as many holes as it takes until one of the teams has a cumulative score better than the other team. I love it. Oh my God. It is so I cool. It. I, I, I want to see I wanna, that so bad. Uh, you, you're still out of bad. I want to see that so bad. Yeah, that's going to be so much fun. Like the team aspect, they've pushed, the broadcast has for sure, have pushed the team aspect. You can see it on the pylon. You're always like kind of checking and looking down at the bottom and like, and peeping and seeing what team is kind of making a move. You can see the four aces climbing the pylon again. Um, it looked like it was just going to be the two teams smash and torque. But the aces really surged, and you're just like, oh my god, the aces are going to find a way to win this freaking thing. Um, super exciting because you're watching Peter Uline, who's not in contention. You know, you're watching um, Dustin Johnson, who played excellent. I think he, what he finished eleven under. He finished eleven under. Looks like he's in g- good form, though. I will say, it's got a little bit of a pouch there. I don't know. He finished ten under. Sorry, ten under. Okay, yeah, yeah. He's got like a. I don't want to. I I hesitate to say a gut. But no, 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 no. It's just a little pouch where he keeps his cookies. Is cookies slang for cocaine? No, no. Like oh. literally when you eat cookies, yeah. they just go to that little pouch. I used to have one of those. Um, I've I've since uh, I've chosen to upgrade to um, a gut. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that like the levels you go? You go st- stomach before or after gut? It's got to be before. Before. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Okay, so stomach, pouch, gut, badass. Oh, I mean, uh, I mean, you got or is a keg. that too far? You, you're rolling keg. With a keg. Oh, okay. Yeah, keg. Yeah, rolling with a keg. Take it everywhere you go. No, those are the guys. Those are the guys that haven't seen their feet in five years. Yeah, I, or their dick. Yeah. I, I um. Well, you know, my day job. I see a lot of. Um, you see the horrors of humanity, and it's unfortunate. I, I see a lot of. People in general. And um, I know when I'm going to a state that allows you to kill yourself. When my, <laughs> when my, when, when, when 88% of my weight is between my neck and my navel, I'm out. Take me out. 88%. That's the cutoff. I've seen people like in the 90s percentile. I don't, I'm maybe I'm more vain than I give myself credit for, but all of that around you, it, you know, it, it is um, quite a sight. Some of you have put in some serious work. Hey, you. you know, and that's that's honestly, it's, as much as it is uh, being lackadaisical or just lazy in terms of physical activity, it also takes a lot of work to actually gain that much weight and and. Uh, 
excess fat deposits. It, it's it's bad. Anyway, DJ looks like he's in form. Um, and of course, Brooks as probably the top two live guys heading into the Masters. Would you say you got anybody else you want to throw in there? I think you probably you might you might not. I'm not a hundred percent certain. Well, you might not even know who's in the who's, field. Who's yeah. who's in the field? Oh, give me a um, name of those, a of a hot lift player those, that you think deserves to be those, there. Then. Those names have been thrown a lot around a lot. Um, I was giving you a segue to get to to brag here, and you and you missed your chance. I know I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, your boys, there's, there's so fucking many nailed it. You fucking nailed it this week. Uh, yeah, wait, well, brought yeah, but uh, my my uh, your my pick, bet, yeah. Hey, he brought me back to even, right? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I was looking at him the whole like I was like I was like he's at even a lot. I'm like, oh god, he was at like plus two at one point. I was like, fuck, finishes under four, so. Hey, you know, it's at least it's not plus, right? Yeah, it's not plus. That's I you know what what's what's uh scary was at a certain point I thought, man, I should have picked Chucky Howell. Okay. Because he was doing he was doing well, but he fell back and finished five under. Um well, he cost you a shot. Yeah. Not a big deal. If you don't know what we're talking about, um our show is doing a one and done every week where we select one live player. We're not going to do it for the majors because the field gets too narrow for the live guys and we might run out of players. So we don't want to, we don't want to do that. So we're doing uh 14 events, all 14. Well, I guess it'll end up being 13 because the 14th event will be a match play playoffs. So probably end up being 13. We might maybe figure out a way to include like the last major or some kind of team thing on the last day, maybe to, if it's close, if it's over in week 14, um, then it's over. Then Jerome's going to shave his legs, put on a skirt, and, well, you probably don't even need to shave your legs with all that blonde hair. Do you? Uh, the it's, thighs. It's, I think it's, it's the thighs that you're going to see some I bush. Still, I still have pretty muscular thighs. It's going to be a horror show <laughs> for anybody at that public course that I play at. But Austin, Austin, uh, a fan of the show and a fan of the a fan of us, uh, and a friend of the 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 uh, pod, he's uh, expressed um, that he will will take photos and videos. Oh, he's filming. Her. Yeah, no, no, there, no. He's yeah. filming every second of that. I will. That's, that's if wait, you know, and that's the other thing. We got <laughs> ten more events. Like if, I'm rooting for I, you, man. If I'm I start making you. some good picks, I mean, we might see just like a. You know, I mean, if you ever wanted to know what Stanley Tucci would look like in a skirt, I mean, you might find out. Anybody but Jay, are we in agreement with that? Like, we, we anybody but Jay wins this thing, we'll be happy. And if we could somehow get Jay to kind of choke this away, oh God, it'd be so sweet. Now with this huge lead that he has, if he could just piss this whole thing away over the next ten live events, oh my God, we will be absolutely gloating while mm -hmm. he's out there. Hitting from the ladies. Gosh, that's going to be such a great time. Um, speaking of playing golf, you played golf this week? I went, uh, you know, all of the courses opened here in New York uh, as of yesterday. Yes. Uh, all the major courses uh, and the um, the public courses. I mean, obviously, we have a the good old dogwood down in the Hopewell Junctions is open year round as long as there isn't <laughs> snow on the ground. You can play the nine hole course there, uh, <laughs> which is terrifying. Uh, and, and good in, in a certain way. I did not partake, uh, during the off season, but, um, uh, everything opened yesterday. So I went out and played 18 today with my wife and, and Austin and his fiance. And I shot a 117 because obviously, uh, <laughs> no matter how Whoa. much work, no matter how much work you do in a simulator, uh, sometimes shit just doesn't work out, but it was, uh, you know, a brisk, 32 to 35 degrees uh all day with the wind chill and um but the sun came out and but it was why still... are you playing golf when it's yeah, 35 yeah, degrees outside yeah. the the wind was gusting at like 15 to 20 miles an hour at certain times um so there was uh there was a lot of shots that were messed up but um you know, what'd, I, you, I, what'd you hit well what'd you hit well uh, any of the clubs 
Yes, yes, by wedges. Uh, my oh, new good. 52 degree, I hit really well. I sank a 45 foot putt hey. on nine. Um, which that's I was, how you, yeah, that's how I you was do. super happy at. Uh, so that would have been a four putt. So you saved yourself a, a 120. That's nice. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, you know, started on, on the, uh, off the tee on one, just perfect, played it. I was like 60 yards where'd you play? out. Where'd you play? Uh, McCann. McCann. Okay. I know 60 one yards yep. out up at the top of the um, hill or where'd you get it? Uh, yeah. Top of the hill, like yeah. right down the, you know, curve to the left, no, right nice. in the middle. It was, it was great shot uh, right off the tee box with my, the new driver. And then, um, laid it up. Uh, it was like 60 yards used my, um, 60 degree, put it right in front of the, the green. That's a huge right green. For those of you who don't know, that's a huge green. I mean, if, you, if the pins in the back, you got to hit it another twenty five yards. That's like it. It was more towards. It was more towards the center front. Um, okay. uh, right, right off the green, um, chipped it right on within three feet of the pin and uh, sank it. So it started off with a really, really confident par, and then I only parred nine, and I think I parred uh, sixteen. Everything else was just an <laughs> absolute shit show. So. Uh, first round out, you know, you got, hey, you, got uh, you can only go in a different direction. There's no shame in my game. Guys, guys that are ashamed of their game, they, they fucking lie about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I should, you know, no. Hey, listen, I had some good holes. I had some bad holes. There was no, there was no quitting. There was no, uh, you know, I hit triple bogey. I'm done. Mm. If I had done that, my score would have been a lot lower. Mm. I, I didn't. I, things that, were frustrating. I just, you got to fight through it. You have to take it as a learning experience. You're not going to learn how to get out of a situation that you're not doing well in by just picking up your ball and walking away. Finish the fucking hole. Finish it. Learn something about your game. What are you not doing right? You're doing, you're doing something wrong. It can't be the wind or the green or, you know, it, it can't be that every single time you're sometimes you're just, you're rushing, you're picking up your head, your, your club face is open. It's, it's you're doing something. So you got to figure it out. You're, did you play this week? I did 41, 46 on Monday. Um, probably took one too many drinks on the back. I, I played, I played pretty well. Um, just the back nine. I got a little, I got a little loosey goosey with the, uh, you know, yeah, hence the 46. Yeah. yeah. Hitting like driver off the deck or, you know, um, trying to pull off some crazy ass shot instead of just playing out the fair. I've been, I've been managing the course really well all year. So I did not, I can tell you that I did not do that in the back. And when you don't do that in the back at Charleston national 50 is an easy score to get when you're, when you get to trouble there. So, um, I think yeah, the most, I mean, the most yeah. tragic thing about this weekend was the fact that yesterday, it was 73 degrees outside oh. and then <laughs> it was like 35 this morning with the wind. It was just, uh, God bless my wife for coming out and playing. Um, I, I, I have to say I'm super proud of her. Uh, she figured out her driver. This is her second year basically playing since, you know, screwing around playing golf with her dad and her mom in high school and stuff. But, um, really figured out her driver was really ripping them. Um, so, you know, I'm very happy to, it's, it's great when you have a, your partner, your, your spouse, whatever plays with you because then they can't yell at you as much for wanting to play. Yeah. You cracked the code for sure. Um, <laughs> all right, let's, uh, do your thing. Let everybody know what, what they need to do now that they've listened to Batman birthdays and Brooks, the three, and everything. Beat. Yeah. Um, and some life lessons. Uh, absolutely. Tom so, Hey. Guys, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell in the corner so that you get notifications that we're posting. Most of the time, it's right on Monday morning. So listen to it on your way to work. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We're out there. Let us know what you think. Uh, let us know. Hey, shut the fuck up about comic books. We don't care. Cool. All right. So we'll talk about something. That's going to be me commenting when you see that. That's fine. I don't I don't care. Whatever. But let us know. Interact with us. We're more than more than happy to talk to you. We're more than happy to reach out. Suggestions. You know, the we're we're doing this for you. We don't do this for us. Right. 
Give me that take.com, by the way. www.give me that take.com, fully Hell functional yeah. website. Yeah. Hit that thing up. You can uh, find all the archived shows. So if you, and it takes you right to the YouTube. When you get to YouTube, that's when you subscribe. So if you're going to find us through something, find us through give me that take.com. That'd be fucking sweet. We're going to do a master's, some kind of master's preview. Don't know what we're going to do yet, but we're all going to probably wear green, drink some green beer, and. Um, tell you that Scotty Shuffler and yeah, and Scotty Shuffler and Rory McElroy are gonna miss the cut at Augusta. You can clip that choke. God, it's gonna be so sweet when Liv puts the green jacket on, and takes it home. Golly, man, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to make that gloating ass fucking open to the net to that podcast next Sunday night. I can't wait. So, anyway, that's all we got. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs>